That is sugar snap peas. Super sugar snap peas that my roommate and I set up this uh, little trellis ordeal going on here. They're doing pretty well now. I got really excited. I had a lot that I got from work. So I planted them all. And then the ones that we planted, she planted first, they kind of got cut back by some deer. So looking forward to see if they're gonna still grow and produce after that. The peas are facing south, but the problem that we've had is that there's a lot of winds that come through the backyard and they sweep in here and they just like blow all this around. So we had a little like a little like see-through tarp hanging out over here to kind of protect them when they were little, but they seem to be doing all right now and the weather seems to be favorable for them. So not too worried about the tarp, but I was worried about the wind for a while, but they have a nice, they're starting to get a nice grasp on the trellis that we laid for them. So um, the only thing I'm worried about is the deer. How do you like my little deer deterrent strategy right here? Just kind of like spun some twine around the posts and uh, strapped some plastic bag streamers all around it so hopefully they'll find that to be very peculiar and not want to investigate further i still need to get more soil for the beds and all those leafy greens in the middle are cabbage and kale and i'll be planting those during the next leaf day um it's a root day. In fact, I think this entire month is good for planting, transplanting, and sowing roots. So um, I've been digging in my garden, getting ready to plant some onions. So I didn't get a chance to plant anything yesterday because I was really busy at work. I didn't get home till late, so now you can watch me work the soil in preparation for the root vegetables. We're gonna have some learning time. Dirty secrets. So I'm gonna share some information that I got from a community college in Southern California. This information was provided in 2019, so be advised some of this information can be outdated. Out of season crops are usually flown in hundreds of miles away and or chemically stored. Wax is one way suppliers keep produce from rotting before being sold. Residue has been left on the produce as a consequence and consumed by consumers. Oranges and avocados can be grown and sold in California, but suppliers want to make money and Californians in local states don't want to pay so much for the fruit. Suppliers buy low and sell high. Mexico has less regulations and standards on growing these crops and sell their crop for a lower price. Suppliers in the U.S. buy from Mexico and transport them to the U.S. California oranges and avocados are sold to other countries for a higher profit. It takes more trucks on the road, more energy, traffic, exhaust, unnatural preservatives, and time spent on the journey when crops are brought from farther distances. There's no need to buy produce from hundreds of miles away. The point I want to make with this information is that it's more logical in health and energy to buy local and grow your own food. Currently, now that international exchange is uncertain, it's important now more than ever to grow your own food and develop a relationship with local farms. With greenhouse technology on the rise, we now can grow any kind of crop in their preferred conditions, even in places with very low temperatures and light intensity. Back to my garden. So, as you can see, my soil is kind of made up of a lot of rocks. This is because the plot of land that is this backyard used to be a parking lot. So they had laid down a lot of, a lot of small rocks. And because of that, it's really hard to dig into the soil with a shovel. 
So that's why I've just been using this and just scraping away at it. Um, the soil here in my location is dominantly clay soil. So I'm digging a little trench for these onions and giving them just enough space for the bulb to develop. And I'm going to be loading this trench with some soil that I'm picking up at the greenhouse that I work at. If I were to leave all these rocks in this area and just plant the onions that I have, the bulbs would probably be really disfigured as they grew. And if I just sifted through all these rocks and was able to put back the soil that was here, it would be significantly less than what was there before. And that's pretty much filled with rocks and then some soil. So I'm just going to mix it with the soil that I have at work so that I have a little bit of both. I'm sure it'll develop just fine, but this is my first attempt at growing onions at all, especially in the ground, so I, this is all an experiment. These are the ones that I've done already on the other side, so that's the side that I'm working on. This is the side that I already finished and needs to be watered, but uh, I learned that from the six pack that I'm supposed to separate the onions. <laughs> And I didn't do that at first, so I just like planted them in big clumps, but they were all separate plants, so I had to go spread them out. The root days won't last forever, so I am trying to get this project done. The thing I learned from a farmer in Vermont is, yes, water can rust metal, but the thing that rusts farm tools the most is dirt. So if you leave dirt on your farm tools over time, it'll start to corrode it. Um, so I suggest washing your tools after every use whenever you're done with them. That's me digging up dandelions the hard way, but I'm enjoying myself. Dandelions are hard workers. They reach deep into the soil and collect the nutrients from places most backyard plants won't reach, which may explain how it got to be so packed with benefits. It's an excellent source of vitamin A and C, supplies minerals such as iron, calcium, and magnesium, as well as fiber. Even the greens have protein. Dandelions provide antioxidants, which neutralize free radicals. Too many free radicals in the body accelerate aging and provide ideal conditions for diseases to thrive, such as cancer. It's known to be a diuretic, anti-inflammatory, and used as a liver tonic. Supports healthy bones, reduces bad cholesterol, blood sugar, and blood pressure. Known to have antiviral and antimicrobial properties. Things you can make with dandelions. Dandelion jelly, dandelion tea. The younger, less bitter, early season leaves can be added to a salad as well as their flower heads for color and nutrition. And dandelion coffee is considered a rite of passage into the world of wild dining. Dandelions may not be compatible with every body, so listen to your body and don't consume dandelions without considering the current health of your body as introducing something new to your diet could aggravate other conditions. Learning time, know your farmers. It's important to know your farmers, and I want to note that just because something isn't labeled as organic doesn't mean it isn't organic. It's expensive to be certified organic, a title that comes with a lot of expenses. Likewise, some farmers still use Roundup on their property, which is a crime against nature and humanity. Supporting farmers that use this outdated poison means that you support people that actively harm our land and water. When land is ill from poisoning, it can get into our crops, imbalance our ecosystems, and endanger our pollinators. Only support farmers who use safe and natural methods of pest and weed control. Most wheat and corn grown in large-scale operations is genetically modified. They spray it with Roundup or a harmful equivalent to kill the crop early and save money by shortening the planting to harvesting time. They cut its life short instead of waiting for it to mature naturally. This could be a reason for some people's gluten allergy. People have been fed a wheat crop that hasn't reached maturity. Large-scale conventional agriculture operations are outdated. They make more problems, use more resources, and end up ruining the soil, such as tilling, which destroys soil life. I'll talk about how monoculture sucks more later. 
Support local. Know your farmers and their practices. Buy from roadside stands. You pick operations, farmers markets, and co-ops. Now let's see how my garden is doing. So here I planted up a bunch of tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants, and I added some basil to the pots. And if I could go back and change what I did, um, I separated the basil and I should have kept them in clumps because they didn't do so well by themselves. With basil, I learned later, they're better together. So next time I would keep them together in the pots. So that was my first gardening update for my 2020 garden. Thanks for watching and I hope you gained something useful from this video. I encourage everyone to grow their own food even if it's just that one tomato plant in a pot because everything matters. Everything makes a difference. So buy local, grow food not lawns, um, share what you've learned, and uh, make gardening common knowledge. And good luck to you in your gardening. Uh, live long and prosper. And uh, may the force be with you.